So if, if you were just watching me live two minutes ago, there's no point in watching this because uh, I'm basically saying the same thing um, in a different way and you can actually hear properly because the audio is working. So I just wanted to talk to you guys. Um, I just wanted to say if you're in Melbourne, don't worry. Everything's going to be fine. We have a plan. We have things in place. Everyone is speaking behind the scenes. Obviously, Daniel Andrews, five days does not mean five days. It usually means more and we can only judge him based on you know, his uh, actions in the past. So we have to take that on board and imagine that it's not going to be just five days. However, um, uh, Melbournians, Victorians have come together a lot over the past few weeks, uh, months, I should say, um, and we've we've got plans. Don't worry. I mean, you've got people like Pete Evans joining Parliament as a candidate. Um, you know, people who didn't want to be involved in politics are getting involved in politics because there's no choice anymore. No one else is fighting for us and there's no other option because this, like, isn't living. So what else are we going to do? Sit back and just pretend everything's going to be okay? No. Like, we're in too deep now and there's not really a better option than doing something. So don't worry. Don't be too depressed. Um, try and change that that energy that you've got, the the sadness or worry or anxiety into action. So that's where the next topic comes in. I interviewed Dolores Carhill a couple of weeks ago and I actually kept this little snippet and maybe I kept it just for this uh, time because I think it's really good timing. Basically what she explains is that every public servant especially has a duty of care to the customers or patients or even the parents of schools, um, police officers, um, to citizens. They have a duty of care to actually know what the rules are around their actions, around what they are enforcing, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so they have a duty of care to us to actually know the facts on what they can and can't do. Now, there is unlimited, undeniable evidence that these measures of mandatory masks, et cetera, et cetera, lockdowns are definitely have, have adverse uh, reactions for people. So you can't really claim ignorance anymore. So what Dolores Carhill is saying is that we can send a very simple letter to these public servants, whether it be a police officer, the principal of a school, um, you know, doctor, nurse, employer, even employee, uh, employer, sorry, um, saying to them um, that we are putting them on notice because we believe they are potentially in breach of their duty of care and committing crimes of malfeasance. And basically um, what I'm hoping that this will do is just make them think um, as well as you can actually, you can report them for malfeasance and you can actually sue them if you if you end up going that far. But for now, for example, imagine you send a letter to the principal of the school of your children and you say, look, you know, uh, you have a duty of care towards my children and towards me. And I would like confirmation from you that you have done the research to suggest that mandatory masks wear, mask wearing for eight hours a day is okay for my children's health. And if you can confirm that 100%, then, uh, then that's fine. But if you cannot, I will hold you personally liable for the crimes of malfeasance because you have a duty, care, duty of care towards me and my children to protect us. And um, you're, you, you could be breaching that if you haven't done the research. It might actually just give them an idea to go research masks or research malfeasance and see what's going on. Now, you can send these letters to your members of parliament, doctors, et cetera, et cetera. You get the point, right? And when you send these letters, you send it to their personal name, okay? Not their title, not Honourable Daniel Andrews or not um, doctor, whatever. Actually, their personal name because they're personally liable. So it's, the, it's their mortgage, it's their livelihoods at stake here. So if you give someone a letter like that and then they try to force you to take, tests or the experiment, um, they might think twice before doing that. And and um, it could just make them think. But secondly, imagine if you were a principal and you got five of these letters from five different parents who don't even know each other, you would start to think, oh, geez, there's some sort of movement going on. And I don't know if I'm protected anymore. Like, what is this? And I think it's a great idea. So look, in the description of this live stream, you will see the directions there. You'll see the interview with Dolores Carhill, which I think you should definitely check out. It's only 11 minutes long. Secondly, um, you know, I'll be doing these letters, by the way. And, you know, I see a lot of people commenting online, like, stand up, Victoria, don't comply, do this, do that. And I wonder what all of them are doing. I wonder if they are all sending these letters, signing the petitions, doing all these things, because it's a drip, drip, drip effect. And even if it doesn't do anything, it makes us feel good about being proactive. Because when you're depressed and you're just depressed and you just wallow in your sorrow, 
that's not going to be proactive. It's not going to help anyone. But if you send some of these letters or you help your neighbor or you do something positive in the in the in the face of negativity that's going to make you feel good about yourself and it's going to make you stronger and it's going to make everyone around you stronger so what i suggest is that everyone does something that they can and then you know if things do go really badly at least you can say you tried um my theory is that you know there's really no way to sit back anymore it's like this is so bad that living is not worth living anymore unless you're fighting like even if you just decided to be ignorant to what's going on like what's the alternative like living isn't really it's just it's not a, it's not a way to live so you may as well just get on board and do stuff the other thing i want to talk about talking about doing stuff is tonight at 7 p.m uh reignite democracy australia media will be reporting on a an event at flinders street station under the clocks at 7 p.m this event has actually been kind of in the making since new year's eve but because uh, basically saying that if a lockdown was announced that night, they would meet at 7 p.m. under the clocks. So it's happened. The lockdown has been announced. And so 7 p.m. under the clocks at Flinders Street Station is where um, RDA Media will be. And I may or may not see you there. And, uh, yeah, we're just going to have to take each day as it comes. But don't worry. Be positive. We've got plans. And, uh Maybe this is good. Maybe it's going to wake up a few more people and, you know, maybe this is what we need. So just stay positive, be proactive, and um, I will see you online tonight at 7 p.m. when I uh, start interviewing people or doing some media. So see you guys later. Send out some letters. It'll make you feel good.